Team here, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for October 2nd, 2023, 6 p.m. here at the Shoulder House. Good evening, audience members, administrators, and council. Thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, Ms. Bernie, can we call roll, please? Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. <coughs> Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwell. Here. Seven members present. Right. Thank you. And then tonight's invocation will be done by Mr. Lindsay. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you once again, Father, to lead us and guide us in the business of the city. Father, we ask you to keep your hand upon council and administration, our firefighters, our EMTs, our police officers, and our military, Father. These things we ask in your precious son's name. Amen. Amen. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, moving on, uh, we need to do the minutes for the, the uh, special meeting. So moved. It's 8 11 23. So motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. Any questions or comments on those minutes, Council? All right. The second was Eggleston? Yes. Okay. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Those are accepted 7 0. And then we'll need to do a motion for the minutes at the 9 18 meeting. So moved. Second. I'll go with Mr. Vice Mayor's your motion and second by Mr. Cook. There's three of us there. <laughs> Any discussion, Council? Mm -hmm. And when you're ready, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. And Councilman Cook? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 7 0. All right, thank you. And moving on uh, to Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of public, and members of the administration. So, tonight's meeting and agenda is pretty light with the anticipation of the work session that we just had. Um, so, excuse me, the bar departmental reports, we got a new format. Um, most of the department reports would still be given once a month, and that's going to be the second meeting of the month. We're doing things a little bit different on our planning and zoning side. So people's every meeting, they're going to get a, uh, a planning and zoning report. And that's just the data moves so quick in the planning and zoning department. If they were to get this at the end of the month, the case has already been closed and moved on. So to give them the most up-to-date data, every uh, meeting there'll be a planning and zoning report. So that report is under departmental reports. So if council have any questions on that, I'd be happy to entertain them. Under informational items, under discussion topics, we have the 2024 budget work session. Uh, we are needing a motion. We would like to have a work session prior to the start of that meeting uh, to discuss the uh, operating budget for next year. Um, that will keep us out of having a random day. Uh, we have 5.30 on there. If we can start at 5, that would be great like we did today. And we can knock out a lot of that budget. And maybe we can use the rest of the regular meeting to get through. And then if we need a second one, we can schedule it at that point in time. Ideally, we would like to get everything in one pass if possible. We will start introing uh, the budget at the second meeting in November with the uh, a vote on it at the first meeting in December. We can adjust that by one meeting should we have to. So push comes to shove, we can intro at the first meeting in December and uh, pass at the second. Uh, but we want to keep that uh, at the original schedule. So if we could keep that November 6th um, for a work session, that would be great. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Move to uh, have a work session at 5 o'clock instead of 5.30 on November 6, 2023. Second it. Who seconded it? I did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's allowed to do it. Any discussion, council, on that? I'm not used to that voice. I'll be out of town without that 8.5. Did they say 5? Well, did he say wants to move it? He said 5. Well, not if it's a regular council meeting. Bob said he would be It's a regular council meeting, I think. Oh, yeah. that's right. Okay. I'm going to be. All right. Well, Mr. Bond won't be here, but we'll take notes. Watch the YouTube video. Yes. It's on YouTube. There you go. When you're ready, please. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? 
Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. That's accepted 7 0. Uh, we will have that at the firehouse. Okay. So it's easier for acoustics and we can put it on the smart board. Thank you. Yep. Okay. And moving on to the city manager report, we got Rumpke updates. So uh, the newsletter just hit today, just so we're all on the same page. <laughs> What we know from Rumpke so far is mid-November they're going to be switching out to carts. Um, we are still waiting to hear back from waste management regarding the hard date of their removal. Um, if I don't hear something back from this week, I'll be going above and beyond our contact that we have. Um, has council had any communication with anyone from waste management um, regarding any kind of hard date of removal for containers? No. No. Okay. So um, we got some calls at the city building today. What we what we know is on the flyer. So we know again to reiterate, November around mid-November, Rumpke is going to be dro dropping off their cards. We don't have a removal date of waste management. Ideally, we're still waiting on that Excel list from waste management, so Rumpke can make an easy transition. Should we don't not get that list, unfortunately, Rumpke is going to have to mail out letters to every one of our residents and our residents have to call in and get placed on the earning service level. So. Again, we're really hoping we get that uh, information from waste management by the end of this week because it's going to have uh, a burden on our citizens if we don't. Um, and again, if I don't get that, I'm going to above our contacts to get that information. Here's the flight festival and parade. I know it's a little early for this. You've noticed this weekend, again, a big hats off to all the volunteers. It is not a city-sponsored event, but the city does reap a lot of rewards and benefits for having that in our city. So again, thank you to everyone out there who had their hand in getting this up there. It's a great, it's a great uh, event for our city. So again, thank you for that. Um, we have potential additional uh, discussion topics. Nothing has come up since the writing of this report. Um, so I will give council a heads up. We do have quite a bit of very important legislation coming up and there's our year end renewals, uh, liability insurance. We have a Clark County EMA MOU with the fire DMS department. Um, once I get that finalized, we're gonna have that out to you guys as well, as well as our health insurance renewal codification update. And again, and there's our budget read cycle, just in case council needs it written down. First read will be on 1120, second on 12 four. Be happy to entertain any questions. Again, we didn't leave it like this this meeting because of the work session. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. He skipped over the Rite Aid building. Oh, thank you for that. Appreciate that. That's a peculiar, particular interest. It is. I, yeah, I, I put that on our last minute, so I thank you for calling me out on that. What's council's viewpoint on Rite Aid? Um, is council? I know we we know where they're closing October 22nd, and it's always been every council that I've sat under has always said we want it as a city building. Yes, it is. Is this something council is going to want me to look at in the future? Now, I don't know if it's too early with this particular council, and we wait till the next one being sat. Um, my job as a manager is to provide some sort of visions. Uh, so, maybe a loaded question, but does council, does this council as a whole, have any interest in me and directing me to look into it? Well, I. Hmm. Absolutely. That is for you guys to decide. You want to discuss that. Discuss it or make a motion? Well, I mean, what? I mean, your thoughts behind it. I mean, oh, I mean, I think. I mean, I, mean, I don't. I don't know what you think behind it. I mean, I think. Uh, I mean, I don't think anyone else is ever going to. Rite Aid's never coming back. Uh, they've they've already made that clear that um, online prescriptions and and Amazon and everything else is cut to their bottom line. Where the stores that they're shuttering, which I think there's three in Clark County, ours and two in Springfield. They're being closed. Um, <clears throat> I don't see a Walgreens or anything else coming in, in there. Uh, so I would, I mean, I would love to have a city building downtown that is large enough to encompass uh, everybody. Um, and then that frees up the current city building, whether we want to put it up for sale, move this uh, police station over, free up some more downtown space. Uh, current building that we're in. Yeah. Grade 31, too. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> the, uh, are you done, sir? Yes, sir. May I, sir? Oh, I, sorry. I would not be opposed uh, if council wanted the city manager to see how much they want for that corner lot of that building. Uh, it could have a lot of uses. A city building would be ideal but it all depends on money and how much they want for, for that piece of real estate. So if, if council don't object, uh, I think we could ask the city manager to look into it. Uh, any decision made on it, I think 
I'd have to go to Chris Road. We all should wait till after January. Wait till January and let the new council be involved in the purchase or whatever, or not, is what I think. I don't, I don't think, I think we'd spend enough money. <laughs> we shouldn't be, I don't think we should buy another building at this time. So. Possibly next year. Mr. Vice Mayor. I understand it's 9,000 square feet. That would be enough for our needs. I, I would need to look in. That's what all this is about to make the motion to look, have me look into some stuff. Okay. But yeah, we, me and Ms. Harris already <laughs> looked at some things and we are 2,000 square feet now in our current city building. I was say, um, four times. You guys would get 101, the second floor of that is another two, but we're not taking up that much. This is two here. So, and that's not really a good way to look at it. It's just a base information. Um, but I think when you go in, I was in there Friday, just kind of filling it out. I saw Ms. Eggleston over there. Is that Thursday or Friday? I can't remember. Um, and yeah, I think I think there's a way to do it for sure. You know. So we could have city city building and the sheriff substation and the mayor's court and council chambers all in one building. Yeah, council chambers would be mayor's court when you guys aren't using. That's how that would work. Cool. That's how they do it. And like the mayor would just then magistrate would just sit in the middle, and they just sit like where these fine people are sitting. But yeah, it would definitely put every a lot of things under one. I'm done. Thank you, sir. I hope you'll be a better neighbor than Right Aid is. <laughs> we'll take care of it better. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. I won't be here, so, um, but I, I, mean, <coughs> I have a problem you looking into it because that doesn't mean yay or nay, really. It just means find out. Sure. Some information on it, so I have no problem with looking. So. Well, I may do, I may do have to reach out to like some professional people too, especially if you guys want a full blown potential sketch of a layout. I can't do that now, so I'm no engineer and architect, so we may have to pay someone to do like a rough draft if we like the sell price before we make any kind of final decision. But nothing's gonna be done this year as far as that. We don't have time for that. That's all gonna at least be next year, but to expend some money to actually look at and getting into it maybe this year. You need a motion for that? Uh, I would prefer. Push. Push you down, sir. I didn't hear his answer. Yes, I would prefer. Quick question for the motion, sir, if I can. You okay with that, or do you want your motion? Go ahead. How much money are you thinking or anticipating looking into it before we agree to? I don't know. It's not going to be anything exuberant. I have 5000 to spend without council approval, but it's not going to be anywhere near that. Below five or I, I, again, I'm not going to say I'm not going to tell you it's going to be I'm, I'm not going to spend more than 10 K to look at it now, but oh, okay. or even probably seven. I just need to know what a sell price is and I need to go to an engineer be like, hey, generally speaking, will this fit? You know, give me a rough sketch out layout. I, I could agree with that. If Mr. Graham wants to make that motion. I move we direct the city manager to do what he needs to do to look into buying the right aid building. Second. Was the yes, I'm sorry. I didn't repeat it. I apologize. Mayor Lowry. On the way it was worded, I apologize now. Pardon me? Because yes. Okay. Vice Mayor Grimm. Because what? That's all right. Go ahead. That's not a big deal. Councilman Bond. No. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? I'm trying to think about it. I don't think I can ask a question, can I? No. Not now. Uh, well, yes, and then I'm, I think, I'm thinking about the way it was worded, trying to run it back in my head. Uh, I'm going to have to go no on it because I don't remember the exact wording. Well, I think she can read that back to you. That's what I was going to read. Like no, a discussion no, question. No, I can you read it. I know because I didn't catch it either. I was just going to watch it on the video. Okay, can you? <laughs> Sorry. We direct the city manager to do what he needs to do to look into purchasing the Rite Aid building. Uh, yeah, I have look into purchasing Rite Aid. This one. To look into it, not yeah. to purchase it. No, look into. I know that was, I have that down. I'd have to come back to council for legislation to purchase it. Mm -hmm. 
It's over thirty five. Way over. And he's still limited mm-hmm. to his thirty five. You can buy it for under thirty five. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> run with yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I'm buying it for thirty four ninety nine. <laughs> be mad at me. I'm gonna reselling that thing for way more. Uh, <laughs> to, to look in to look into it, uh, if that's your motion, to look into it and see what we can if the feasibility of buying it, then I will change my vote to yes. Just to look into it. Councilman Roadwell. Yes. Oh, did you vote? She's no. No, I didn't. I said no, yes. You did. Okay, I'm just asking. <laughs> and, and, that passes and, uh, five to two. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Well, half of the manager. All right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate yeah. it. Uh, committee reports on tonight. Comments from members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, all the above, please go to the podium. We need your name and address for the record, and please try to keep it to five minutes. Judy Bible, 806 White Pine. I just had a wanted to clarify a couple things on the trash contract. I know it's supposedly better pricing and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I have seen nothing that states that they'll do the yard waste like waste management did and that they'll do bulk pickup without charging because on Rumpke's website it says they charge for bulk pickup. So yeah. what does our contract state? Yeah, the way, if correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Bridge, work council, I'm, the, the yard waste, they'll still take yard waste in the can like, um, like usual. And then there is a there is a price for a bulk pickup. Do you have the number handy? No, everything stays the same. So what you have now stays the same except for the price. It's going to go reduced. So if you had, I think they are allowing three bulk pickups per run, whereas waste management only allows one. So we just got the rest of the contract back today. So I'm going to be actually amend, amending that Facebook post we did okay. to list the other services. But a lot of it, 99.9% of it is just the same. I was uh, explaining to uh, this lady right here earlier today about it's just a different hauler. Uh, with the bulk pickup, the only thing you're going to charge for is that CCF. So if it has a refrigerator in it, like you're right. throwing away a freezer, that's a $60 charge. But if okay. you're just throwing a mattress out, same product. Wrap it up plastic, throw it out there, they're taking it. Okay. Yeah, so all that's still the same. Yeah, I just mm-hmm. want to make sure because on their website, I think it said something about $41 charge for a bulk pickup and I was like, well, oh, you ain't doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's for their customers who aren't on a city contract. Okay. So if you were just living in the middle of town somewhere and you needed their services, okay. that's probably what you That's what I wanted to mm-hmm. double check. Yeah. All right. For sure. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Yeah, that. no problem. Anyone else? Uh, Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I do have a question since you just voted on that. Nothing, he said he was going to need money to check into it, but was anything ever, that wasn't put into the question on when you voted on it. How much money is he going to need to look into it? I mean, you heard he has a spending cap, but he, he mentioned it, he's looking somewhere. I mean, he doesn't know because, I mean, it's a, it's a you know, kind of a, so it can be any amount, and it's already passed. Well, no, is that he, right? Because he would come back to us. As Randy's very good. If he comes back to, you know, let's say he goes to, to talk to an a engineer, the engineer is going to give him a price before he does anything. And if Randy yeah. thinks it's too high or it's going to upset us or you, he's going to come back to us. But, I mean, we're looking at the neighborhood of maybe $5,000, maybe less, maybe a drop more. Okay. I just, I know all the, when they got the other building, all that stuff cost thousands and thousands of dollars to get well, we, we engineers and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, but we also did some work on the inside of it. We, you know, purchase of the building, some, uh, you know. Okay, basically. but it won't be. No, this is just a, basically a, taking a peek at it and seeing what kind of options we would have if, if they were decided to buy it. Okay. As far as engineer wise, you know, room, space, and buildings and things like that. Okay. Um, another question I had is when are they planning to switch the traffic lights to change the traffic pattern? That'll be in the spring. In the spring? For, yes. Okay. Um, I got Judy answered that one for me. Um, they haven't made a decision yet on the pool, have they? 
of what they're going to do, whether they're going to go ahead and put it in? No, we um, we just discussed at the last special at the meeting right before you guys got here that uh, council has decided not to put the liner in it and save that money. And uh, they, at that meeting, they directed uh, the council made a vote to direct them to look into options what it would cost to build a new pool if city ever wanted to go that route. Okay, and was that going to be paid for by grant money of some type? The, 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 the liner, pool, yeah. The, the liner, yes. The liner was. Money. We'd gotten a Nature Works grant for I think seventy. 45. 45,000. Okay. okay, and that's the only thing that that can be used for. Um, the, the no, because we could we could shift it over to something you know part outdoor recreational related like gazebos <coughs> or maybe park equipment or something of that nature. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Um, so if, if we don't, if they didn't do if they didn't do the pool if they decided they couldn't, would that be maybe a good place to put a pickle? ball court in or would that be way more expensive than trying to but I thought if you already had the grant money then you wouldn't have to spend money to line the it would just depend because you know if the pool saying possibly wouldn't open next year or the year after you don't want to put you know a, you know pickleball court in if that's a potential possibility so they would probably look at I mean council would probably discuss putting gazebos in a park or swing sets or whatever we could use that for recreational wise okay well, we I just thought maybe that would be a good place to put it. Yeah. If well, we there was that to, money there, and I, I didn't know how that worked. So. Yeah. We haven't got to that point as to where we're going to move the grant to. Okay. Um, and quite a while back, people on Madison Street had asked about the possibility of maybe putting a, a soccer field, I think, behind the houses, that, new houses that are going up. Because there had been a bunch of people over there that, a bunch of kids that would have liked something at that end, and they just sort of didn't act like they wanted to do that, but they, I just wondered if there was a reason that wasn't taken up that, you know. We had, we had put some goals out there between that property and the backside of Scott, and then uh, we were inherited those goals. We did some repairs to them. They used it for a little bit, but trash was everywhere. Uh, we even put cans out there and we had trash, but that's not all, all of it, but the, also the other goal that we did receive as a donation, um, we have to remove it. We tried to repair it and keep it up, but it's we weren't able to do that. So we're, if there's something future that that is uh, looking to go on, that would be an additional with Mr. Bridge and Council. Okay, I but just we did never have heard one, any we more did have one that, back here. So. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, I just never heard any more about it, so I just wondered what happened to that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Janelle. Anyone else? Good evening, Rhonda Maneman, 317 North Adams. Um, we talked about the festival a little bit, so can I ask just real quick, is it too late to drop off food items for the one mile of? Mile of food, no. Okay, and where do we drop those off at? I think they've got it set up, you can, are we talk, how much are we talking, a lot or? <coughs> okay, I, I think they're taking food at uh, Chief, do you remember, is it? Go ahead. You drop off the fire. That's what I was thinking, but I didn't want to say it before. Okay. Okay, great, thank you. Um, my question is about the Bucky's going in um, south of Park Lane. I looked through the last um, two or three months of uh, meeting minutes on the Nuclear Law website. I didn't see where that had been discussed before. Has it been discussed? It has nothing to do with us since it's outside the city limits of Nuclear Law. That would be Clark County or Bethel Township. Yeah, I, I beg to differ. I think it does have an a influence on us. Um, I saw several reports that WHIO has been airing. One of them was a little bit of information uh, filmed from a um, Huber Heights Planning Commission meeting in which their estimate, I've tried to see if this was a mistake, if they have estimated this down, and I can't find it online anywhere. Um, the estimate that they used at that meeting was 23,000 vehicles per day divided by uh, 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes, and uh, you know, that's 16 vehicles a day, or uh, 16 vehicles a, a minute. And that's just a straight average. Mm -hmm. You know, we all know there's gonna be more traffic there at seven o'clock in the morning than there is at one o'clock in the morning. Um, part of their comments included some concern about that level of traffic 
and that there would need to be some planning done for emergency vehicles and um, emergency traffic through their traffic accidents, et cetera. Um, and the planning commissioner in Huber Heights at the time had no information about what kind of plans would be made for that. And so I would present to all of you that we have an opportunity here that's not going to last forever. I think New Carlisle and Bethel Township ought to get together and approach Huber Heights and say, look, Huber Heights doesn't live around there. All the rest of us go through that intersection a lot more than anybody from Huber Heights does. And so what is their plan for getting emergency vehicles through all of that traffic? I think everybody would like to know how we're still going to get the Children's Hospital fast, how we're going to get to the tra trauma center at M Miami Valley Hospital fast, let alone our normal day-to-day -day back and forth to work and everything that we do. If anybody has been through the intersection of 70 and 201 or 70 and 202 lately, we don't want this intersection to become like that. And so we don't have a say on what Huber Heights does, but we're certainly going to feel the negative impact if they don't do it right. So I think now is the time for us to be proactive and approach them and see what they're going to do so their decisions have as little negative impact on the rest of us as possible. Because we live closer, we go through that. Huber Heights doesn't. Mr. Vice Mayor? First of all, 201 and 202 are unlimited access thoroughfares. 201 and 202 are unlimited access thoroughfares. That means you can get on and off of them anywhere. Route 4 is limited access. Um, it would take a lot more than 16 cars an hour to back up traffic from this 16 cars a minute or 16 cars a minute would take a lot more than that to back it up clear to um, clear to the uh, interstate I'm not sure I understanding you because 201 and 202 at 70 um, if they don't have residential driveways going right onto the road immediately at that intersection, you have to go for a while before, you know, a few hundred feet either way before you get to that. But still, there is access, there are traffic lights. There are no traffic lights, no driveways mm -hmm. to speak of on Route 4. I'm sorry, I'm missing your point. You're comparing apples to oranges. There's a traffic light at Wendy's. There's a traffic light a few feet north of that to um, go either way on uh, two, 235 there. Um, are they going to buy up the properties on either side of no, 235 last, so they can widen the road? The last I heard was that the Nucle uh, the Huber Heights Planning Commission said no. no I'm sorry. That. Huh? No. They said yes to both. They said no to the truck stop okay. <clears throat> on, on the other side of the highway, the old uh, concrete industrial plant. Uh, that's, uh, that's where a truck stop was proposed to go. Now the Buckies is going in. I mean, barring any sort of lawsuits, that's their full steam ahead on Buckies. Uh, oh yeah, they're going to do it. I mean, and, that, and that's, been, that's, that's been very clear for a long time and, that they're going to do it. And that's Huber Heights um, <laughs> from, from uh, cannibalizing their own small businesses to annexing land uh, for their own self gain. Um, you know, I understand what you're saying, but we, while we have a dog in a the fight, they're not, they're going to do what they're going to do. And, and all we can hope is they live up to their word and, and make the on ramp or off ramp from four to, to, to 40 or to 235. Um, Hope is not a strategy. We need to be proactive. We need to reach out. We need to say specifically what our concerns are, if indeed we have them. I'm shocked that I'm not hearing any concerns. Anybody have concerns about well, here's 16 cars a minute trying to go in and out of that place and trying to get through there? You're, you're talking eight miles from our property, our, our city limits. I mean, there's not much we can do. The, the, the better right. angle would be, and this is, correct me if I'm wrong, the better angle would be, because um, just like you said, Huber Heights doesn't care what 
Little New Carlisle. It's the seven of us, they're not going to listen to us. If New Carlisle, and I'm not saying this kind of silly, I'm being serious, if New Carlisle residents are really against it, it's in the power of the citizens to go fight Hoover Heights with it because they're, they're not going to listen to us. But if you were to fill it with, if there's two, three, four hundred people or even a thousand of people <coughs> that doesn't want it and you all were to show up their meeting, that would do more good than six of us. That That's not, you know, that's not going to happen. Well, so, I mean, that goes both ways then. I mean, if, if there's not enough people in the citizen and citizens of New Carlisle that are against it, then Okay, you want me to put something out there on social media to say flood the city building with contacts? If you guys have oh, anybody, I yeah, mean, I, I don't want to do that to you guys. Want, can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. We have zero jurisdictional concern or warrant is to tell the I, I understand that we don't. Hear me out, Ms. Manaman. So basically when they do, they're going to have a traffic engineer come in and do what's best for them. Their immediate concern should be getting their own personal vehicles in there for safety issue. My understanding of it is, and there's been zero plans, so it's kind of a moot point to we know what the actual finalized plans are. They're having a dedicated entrance and exit from the highway yes. to go directly into Bucky's. The vast majority of your 16 cars a minute are going to go into Bucky's parking lot, not even look at 235 and get right back on and right back off the highway. And that's just based off what I've read. Until we see a formal set of plans submitted to their, to their planning commission that says this is what it's all gonna look like, we don't know. But even if it doesn't, we don't have any jurisdiction. It is no different than the Bethel Township people flooding our meeting with the developments over there. They had no jurisdictional say whatsoever. You know, but they can come in groves and that's, that's what they did. But I don't think Huber is gonna sit there and say, let's derail, the, all right, sorry, New Carlisle, we're not gonna do the project. You know, we'll always have a mutual aid agreement that we have to go through. So in that traffic study, I'm sure their engineers will look at the most effective way to get your emergency vehicles in and out. They would have to, given such a large development with such a large amount of vehicle and traffic, and then such a large amount of visitors inside the actual facility. That let's wait and see how this unwinds before we decide as a city we're going to go over there and put our noses in the places where it just doesn't belong with any jurisdictional power. The concern should be there, because I do think we are going to get to the I think it's going to add to our traffic problems. I'm not denying that at all. Mm -hmm. But to say it's going to impact our services directly as far as fire and EMS, it's just too, too, it's too early to know. The map that um, WHIO was showing had traffic entering and exiting off of 235, off of the same traffic light at Wendy's, not off of um, I-70. And I understand that, and that is a preliminary sketch plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once this gets more down the pro that down the, the uh, process with Huber Heights Planning Commission, you're going to see more final plans come in. So they're going to do this preliminary stuff to see if this building is going to fit there, and that's going to fit there. This is going to sit, they sit back there. Then they're going to get the big engineer to come in and say, now we're going to spend lots of money to get this thing finalized. That's when I said, well, we'll wait and see what the final project is. Mm -hmm. They just have early sketches. They're probably not even looking at tra rank transportation. They're probably looking at building setbacks where things are going to go. And I'm speaking without knowing what she looked at, and I'd never do that. But just in my experience with this, I'm assuming it's so early in their faith and their mm -hmm. sip phasing that is strictly preliminary. But I understand your concern, too, because if they don't do that dedicated highway and we have a cluster down there, then we do need to get with chief and find out, is this going to impact our response time to get our citizens down there? doesn't mean we have any <coughs> legal say in it. But doesn't mean we can't at least voice our opinion. No. Right, yep, yeah, that's entirely my point. Is that we don't have a vote, we don't have any legal say, but we certainly have, I would think, some influence that we could bring to bear, especially if we partnered with Bethel Township and uh, made the point that we're watching. We have concerns, and so we're watching how this is going to be done. Um, I would much rather that council took a proactive uh, uh, approach on this um, and at least got some kind of commitment from Huber Heights that once they know more, they will get back to us. If we don't ask, we're never going to get anything. All right. Thank you very much. Well, like Mr. Bridge said, we, it is still early. Definite plans have not been made. Plus, you're going to have, since it's a state highway, you're going to have the state of Ohio making dictates on traffic. And they're going to make sure the traffic flows smoothly. 235 and 40 are those state routes, and we finally have something going on here at the marathon. Nobody seems to know what, but that's happening here. Well, so, one delay, major delay. I, I heard Shell bought the marathon, but I don't know. Is that not true? No. I mean, the marathon was waiting for, for the state to put in the turn light. 
That's all it was. Hmm. They've just been, you know, I mean, the gentleman who owns the marathon is, has owned that property since it was Country Connection. And his argument was he never had to have a turn lane when it was a restaurant, a car lot, or a barn sales. But all of a sudden he wants to put a gas station in and the state of Ohio dictated he had to have a turn lane. So he fought that in court, <clears throat> lost, but one that the state had to pay for the turn lane. Oh. So that's what well, he has won. taken so he long. He legal stuff. Um, yeah, he won. Oh. It, it will be open mid-November. Wow. And, there and I know this because I know the gentleman who owns it. And there again, it was the state dictating for smooth traffic. Yep. All right, anyone else? I can just say something real quick. Real quick. Okay. Uh, <laughs> one thing about buttons is that they're done for is making sure there's easy access, quick access in and out of their properties. And like whoever was said, from what I've read, they're supposed to be putting in an exit directly out of 70 into their parking lot, which is where most of their business is coming from. And as far as the up and down, north and south traffic on four, they will most likely make a very extended driveway to take care of that because that is something they are well known for is making sure traffic can get in and out and there's no issues for the neighborhood. All right, thank you. Anyone else? All right, moving <clears throat> on. Uh, resolution is none, ordinance is none. Other city business. Uh, city offices will be closed Friday, October 6th, 2023 for the Heritage of Flight Festival. Uh, city offices will be closed on Monday, October 9th for Columbus Day and open for city discussion. I wanted to mention something really quick because I'm really excited about it. I don't know if you guys know Jennifer Looper, but she owns the building right across from the old Deem Auto Station, mm -hmm. uh, the three-story apartment building. It's brown. And they are putting a lot of work into that. It is looking gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, they were showing me some pictures of the lights that they're going to put on each column on the first level. Uh, she said she's going to paint the sides of it next year, so the sides won't get finished up, but uh, the work she's putting into that is just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. That's all for her. That's all I have, Mr. Cook. I got a laundry list. Okay. <laughs> Quick meeting, Bill. Quick meeting. You got six minutes. Six minutes? Okay. Uh, we had a little parking with the or problem with commercial parking in a residential area over on Falcon. I had spoken to Mr. Bridge about that, and I think possibly our deputies might have already undertaken that. I got a couple of calls on barking dogs. I think that's been a, we've got an ordinance on the books that probably we need to have the deputies enforce that if they're called. Uh, I do have a neighbor that has a dog at 1230 at night, <coughs> comes out and barks the whole time. Has she called the sheriff's office and they haven't enforced it? Is that what I called doing? personally the sheriff's office and was told it would be given to a car. To the best of my knowledge, nothing happened, but that's beside the point. Okay. Talk to me tomorrow on that, if you don't mind. All right. We also got uh, the peddler ordinance, the Green River ordinance, we don't seem to be enforcing. Um, there's people from AGS and several other organizations coming around after hours when city offices are closed. So I don't know what we can do about that. The other thing I want to see about is uh, what's council think about a meet the candidates night since we have four open seats and five candidates running. I think it's a good idea. So you get a booth at the uh, Heritage of Flight Festival that is Friday. Yeah. Do Anybody got any suggestions about a night? Um, That's second Tuesday of next week at your place. Okay, we can do that. No, I mean, I think if whenever, I mean, we usually do it during the week. I usually. How about, a, how about October the 10th? Well, October the 10th, yeah. That's a Tuesday night. You'd have to see if the building is available for we're having here first. Is the shelter house available? <clears throat> sorry. Right? And then you'd have to see if the candidates are available. What, what day? What, what, what day? I'm sorry. October the 10th, I'm the Tuesday. Notes. October 10th. Was that day? What day is that on? Tuesday. Tuesday. 
Uh, we have a planning board meeting there at six o'clock. And so that's out. How about the next day of the Wednesday? Uh, it is open the 11th, open the 12th. Can I make a suggestion? I think the meeting. Oh, well, when is the election? November 7th? November 7th. Okay, we'll forget. Okay. I was going to say, make it closer to the election date. Like, election date's three months, three months away. Yeah, we're, we're getting awful close. <laughs> we're getting pretty close. The, really, the, the biggest days are for the Fridays, the Saturdays, and the Sundays. Um, the next week of the 16th, we have council. Actually, that's going to be at, well, it's moot point. We can't have it that day anyway. 17th is open, 18th is open, 19th is open. So that's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for the week of October. Well, my, my concern is uh, with absentee ballots and early voting, are we going to be behind those dates? Here's what I recommend. Can you maybe, or someone on council, give the candidates a call, find out what date the group is available, then you can come back to me and I can plug it into here. That way you're, All right. see what I'm saying? Because as long as it's a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, more than likely you're going to be fine. If it's not, <coughs> you can always have it at fire chief's place. Okay. Yeah. So let's just make sure the candidates can get a date first and then we can fill in the date either here right. or at the fire station. Anything else? Well, I'm, I'm done. Mr. Cook, is the cops not enforcing the ordinance, the, the, the peddlers after hours either? <coughs> okay. I'll give you a call tomorrow. We'll go to detail about that and I'll send an uh, email up to Sergeant Lehman. Well, I mean, I think with the Green River ordinance, it's kind of hard for one deputy on the street to keep track of the guy walking around with his notepad, but... Well, no, we would rely on the homeowner to call the non-emergency the number then to give a location. Yeah, but deputy can go out that way. If the boy, if the deputy is not tied up, then... Sure. Well, I think also, couldn't we, because I mean, I've had a couple here in the past month or so, and I've told them, you know, real nicely, just said, look, you're supposed to have a permit, you know, just go to the same and building. 99, 99, 100% do not have in. And they say their boss has the permit. Right, right. So I go, well, we just, if we get the name of the company, and we start compiling this, and it's AES or, you know, XYZ company, we send it to you, could you, or, I mean, whether it's you or the me send a let, me look, let me talk with Pauline tomorrow because we we get they come to do the applications okay. so I think maybe what we'll look at internal things that we can do to better communicate with council that way you guys know what who has supposed to be here and what dates we're not but do they so, not does the individual person supposed to have that permit? Not just person. one for everybody? You have no. group of five, it's every on their person. person is supposed to have it on. Every, every time they so knock on my door and they start their little spiel, I go, oh, that's really nice. Can I see your permit from, from the city to be knocking on my door? Yeah, oh, the, well, my boss the has The biggest it. thing go, is, you know why they keep coming up here? Because people keep answering the door. Stop answering the door. No, I answer my door. You're not going. I'm going to answer. The door. Stop answering your door. If you know they're coming, stop answering. That's the only. Knock on it after door. dark. I answer it with a forty in my hand. It's like a, it's like a feral cat. You don't feed them. They're not 40 coming. Cobra or Milwaukee. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I'm joking, kind of fifty-fifty when I say that. By the way, you ain't the door. I don't. The single. Okay, uh, I've got a few things. Um, did you find anything out about the established? In Founded in 1810 sign. Yeah, it's a, yeah, we're working on it. We're, we're going to reincorporate it back to Hensley Park. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, permits. We need to put something on the permits or something to make it more clear. Sure. Um, what permits? Excuse me, Matt. Can't, we can't hear you. Speak up. I got a permit to put a fence up. I called the 811 before you dig. They came out, they marked everything, said everything's good to go. First hole we dug for the fence hit my main sewer line. Oops. And there's nothing on that permit that says that, <coughs> I mean, normal citizen would not know that the city only marks to the property line. And something needs to be put on the permits stating that. So when someone calls and does it, oops, like Mrs. Eggleston's case, she, she did everything right. She 
called Oops. Oops called. We came at Mark to Utility. Cable came Mark, et cetera. Everyone did it incorrectly. On the report that Ms. Eggleston gets, it says Utility Mark to the private line. We know what that means because we work in industry. Common, per and I agree with her. The common person is not going to know what that means. What does that mean? So basically, once your property line hits, you could have laterals in your backyard that we're not going to mark because it's a private. You privately own that. We don't mark privately owned utilities. So the false pretense is, once Miss Eggleston got her oops done, she just assumed everything was marked. She goes, marks that first pole, gets out, she hits her lateral. That's what she hit. That's not marked because it's not our utility to mark. Okay. So that's what she wants, you know. And I agree with her. Like we can just put a blob that says we don't mark private utilities. So, you know, be aware that there may be additional um, services that you may have to locate with. So what line did they hit? Her lateral. Sewer line. No, it wasn't. It was her, her that her line that connects her house and takes out to the main sewer. So, so it basically is. goes in her back of her yard. So it's goes, her line, or no, it's her line because it connects onto her house. Uh, okay. And once it leaves her property and it connects onto our main and our main and our right of way, then it becomes ours. Once it connects to our main. Uh, okay. But anything private and private property is, is theirs. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. All right. Hey, on Joe. And I'll be honest with you, I, this is the first time in since 2015 this has ever happened. So this is not a rampant issue. It is just an isolated incident. Miss Eagleson cannot get the break over there. But it was an isolated incident. Um, this is, does not happen very often. Again, this has happened once since I've been here since October 2012. And luckily, it happened to me. But a little line on the permit ain't gonna hurt anyone, and it could, and it, and it saves someone for going through what she did. It does. Okay. Yeah. So I don't have a problem with it. Um, and um, what are the chances of us getting more trash cans on Main Street? Where, where, we, where, we, where we lack, well, do you think? Well, I mean, there's one on the corner of Madison and Main, like right around Ledford's. There's one on the corner of Jefferson and Main, and one in front of Rite Aid. I think oh, we'll look into it. Yep. And um, additional information on the Rumble Strip for Main Street. Uh, I did contact the news center in Florida that did the article on the city installing that rumble strip, and she contacted. I asked her for any follow-up on that, if it helped any, and she contacted the police department, and the police department said there have been no accidents there since they put the rumble strips in, and that's been almost three years. Um, it's funny you bring it up because the actual engineer working on that has a place in Cape Coral. He's very familiar. He, he actually knows of the area and there's no houses on that outside corner. Um, it's actually a completely different uh, type of corner and delineation marks they had to use. Um, but they're, they, they're looking into that. He was well aware. So it's, it's kind of apples and oranges with what we're working with. But he's actually has a place there. He, I brought it up to him what you said. He goes, oh, I know exactly where that's at. He was just down from my place. But he, he's up here, he's working on this study as well. And I believe the report should be here before the next meeting. Okay. I think that's it. Thank you. Mr. Royce Mayor? How can we find out where our sewer line is? Uh, you would need to usually get a plumber who can use a camera or some sort of snake that has sawn on it. And what a sawn is, is it, it produces a sound and then, uh, then they can locate that with an above ground um, device like we have. We just don't have anything with sound sawn. Plus we have no private plans. Uh, as a matter of fact, today we had a water main break that the sanitary lateral, you kind of gauge by the vent on the house, was five feet off. So we don't know. I mean, the stub said it was here, but it's five feet off. So that's why we don't locate private lines. But you need a plumber, usually to do it with a camera, or, or they'll hook a device up that sends a vibration signal through it, and they'll locate it from the ground. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Anyone else? Mm. McDerger? No, before okay. we, I'm sorry, oh. I'm so sorry. I got a lot of notes. I just want to make sure my notes are correct. So, Mr. Cook, tomorrow I'm going to get in you all to you about barking dogs and green red, red ordinance and meet the candidates. Did I hear you say that the, the, the parking, the commercial parking on Falcon is you're satisfied with? Because I had the cops go out and look at it. Did I hear you say that's been satisfied? 
I had contacted you in regard to it. I don't know whether the boys okay. have done anything about it. Okay, I'll give you on that. And then Ms. Eggleston, trash cans on Main. Right aid building was a motion passed to do, and tomorrow I'll update Facebook page for all of Rumpke's charges. So I just want to make sure I got everything all that. So I'm good. Mr. Rose, move to adjourn. Second. Motion passed. Mr. Rose. That was quick. All right, uh, Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. And Councilman Rodolin. Yes. Motion to adjourn except at 7 0. Thank you very much. Well, have a good evening.